Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm. Doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today. Inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, Mint Mobile has given you a much-needed break on your wireless bill. Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Order today at mintmobile.com slash gam. By the way, in case you're worried that this is like a scene that you wouldn't be laughing at, <laughs> the motif they went for the demon was six saggy boobs. So don't oh worry God. that you would take it too seriously. <laughs> Why does the demon have so many boobs, though? I know. <laughs> to feed the many... Catherines. Demon babies. To, the to many Catherines, the, yeah. To feed the many unfortunate white children under its control now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Titula. I'll be your <laughs> demon. <laughs> it's honestly better than Pazuzu. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because all the good movie review show ideas were taken. I'm your host, Eli Bosnick. No illusions in Heath Enright will be unable to join us this week, but sitting 364 miles to my west are returning guest masochists, Alan and Katie from the Werewolf Ambulance Podcast. Alan, Katie, it's just the three of us this week. Are you ready to make this Mojo Dojo Casa podcast our own? Yeah, thank you so much for having us back. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's such a pleasure and delight to be here. Also, do Heath and Noah know that neither Alan or I is capable of being the adult in the room for very long? Uh, they, I cannot <laughs> tell you how many talkings to I have gotten in the course of this week from various <laughs> members. I think a couple of audience members have also been like, Eli, you got to take this seriously. <laughs> You're not going to, though. Earlier in the year, Noah may have let me, quote unquote, vamp some ads, and I may have produced 20 minutes of stoned rambling about draft. King. So a, a lot of people are on edge <laughs> listening to the initial cut of this episode, but they've left us on our own. It's party time. It's risky business, a movie you should not revisit if you want to still enjoy us. So tell us, Alan, what will we be breaking down today? Well, we'll be breaking down the, in theaters, The Exorcist, The Believer. Oh, Believer. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Katie, oh man, I got a challenge for you this week. How bad was this movie? <laughs> really bad. <laughs> if you loved the original Exorcist film, but thought it had a bit too much atmosphere, scares, special effects, shock, cultural relevancy, and you were worried that the end was too much of a bummer, you deserve this movie. You do deserve this movie. <laughs> you truly do. <laughs> Oh, man. I wish this could be put better than John Carpenter in a recent interview who basically spent an entire interview about an unrelated project being like, how do you fuck up an exorcist movie? There's a kid. <laughs> there's a demon. Why'd you mess it up so bad for? Well, this is actually a master class in doing that. Yeah, truly. Truly. This should be shown in film schools like way before positive movies. You're going to learn a lot more. <laughs> and speaking of which, is there anything you guys would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I would like to nominate this for the best worst at gauche heartstring tug jobs. <laughs> oh boy, aren't they? <laughs> this movie might as well like have a three-legged puppy occasionally limp into frame and be like, there are stakes, I promise. <laughs> its name is Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take the easy one, which is best worst jump scares. Hell yeah. <laughs> we do a lot of bad horror movies. It's kind of our thing. Mm. Rarely have I seen a jump scare of a drawer opening. <laughs> a drawer opening, a person existing. We watched Wes Craven's Wishmaster for our Patreon bonus this month. And after having seen Believer, I was like, I guess it does get better. <laughs> <laughs> Alan just gave me a knowing look because my high school boyfriend's email was wishmaster666 at hotmail.com. Nice. Yeah. Let me guess. He turned out to be a great dude. 
<laughs> oh yes, we're married. What? Oh no, God, no, no. Oh. That's a joke. That's a very serious. I joke. was backing so hard. I was like, "There's no way that guy didn't hit like a puppy with his car and then oh, yeah. go to jail for making meth in his own tailpipe or something crazy like that." <laughs> There's also no way he wasn't bummed that Wishmaster 420 was already taken. Oh yeah, oh kind of- yeah, for sure, for sure. And 420. Then he tried Wishmaster 69, and then he was like, "I guess 666 has to go." This will do. Yeah. And I'm going to go with best worst consequences. We're going to talk about it like 48 seconds before the end. But like, this is drag me to hell levels of, well, I don't think that person deserved that fate when it comes to a movie. (laughs) Oh, uh... (laughs) we'll get to it. All right. Well, we have a lot of um, deeply problematic inclusion to discuss. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the silliness that is Exorcist Believer. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Katie. And I'm Alan. You know, we have a lot of fun with this possession stuff here on God Awful Movies, but it's always worth reminding you that if you or a loved one is experiencing demonic possession, no, you aren't. No, you are not. That's right. And because demons aren't real and mental health crises are, we'd like to remind you about BetterHelp Online Therapy. That's right, Alan. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. Better help because the ideas in this movie are homicidally dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone, welcome to the first writers' meeting for Exorcist Believer. Yay! Yay. Uh, uh, come on, guys. I, I know you might not be super excited to make the fourth Exorcist movie. Uh, fifth, if you count the prequel. Fifth, if you count the prequel. Thank you. Uh, but think of this as your chance to, you know, put your own exciting spin on the genre, right? Maybe 10 or 20 years from now, people will say, yeah, but Exorcist Believer is when the series got really good. You know what? He's right. We've made four movies about spooky kids with twisting heads. This is our chance to reverse expectations. Maybe we could talk about the harm real-life exorcisms do to people or just the dangerous power of belief in general. Or, or two spooky kids with twisting heads. I love it! Okay. AI will never replace us. For sure. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back. And we're going to emerge into the opening credits after 30 fucking minutes of previews in the theater. (sighs) My God. Either way, we're going to start with some uh, super problematic depictions of Haiti. What a choice they made. (laughs) I mean, everyone likes to watch dog fighting, don't they? Yes, it is literally the first shot we have of Haiti. The country is two stray dogs fighting on the beach. (laughs) It's also the first pop scare of the movie. I don't know if you can introduce yourself with a pop scare, but this movie tries it. (laughs) And I would say fails at it. Once you pop, you can't. Stop. Stop making terrible pop scares. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so we're, we're going to watch this pregnant lady sort of wander around uh, what the director of this movie thinks poverty torn Haiti looks like, where she's just being offered various baubles from adorable sort of uh, Dickensian orphans that just strew <laughs> the streets and beaches of Haiti, apparently. For her husband to take photos of because when they're poor, they don't need to consent to having their photograph taken, I yeah, guess. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No, you just you're just allowed to take pictures of them. He does technically ask, but does not wait for the answer of <laughs> no. can I photograph you? <laughs> he's just like photograph and the kid's like, What? And he's like, click, great, excellent. I'm gonna put this on a magazine and make money off your face. You've noticed that I'm very handsome, youngster, so you'll allow this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then one of the things that happens in this in this Haiti tour is she goes through like a a blessing ceremony. Mm-hmm. And I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole here because, by the way, I correct me if I'm wrong. Does this have anything to do with the rest of the movie? 
only that that blessing is the thing that saves Angela in the end. Oh, okay. See, that's thank you. That was my <laughs> question because I feel like it was more of an eeny meeny miny mo situation. <laughs> The only way I know that is because they show the blessing at the end of the movie again. They do. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I mean, if I can zoom out the camera a bit, that means the blessing is like, look, your dad's going to need to handle a somewhat sensitive situation between two. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say riddle emitting demons when you're around 16 or 17. So that's when this blessing's really going to kick in. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> the blessing scene is also, it's like a bit ominous. Like... Yeah, I, I don't. Maybe I just feel that way about religious rites in general. But it felt like a little dangerous. No, for sure. Did you get that vibe. Same, same, same. Also, like I thought that this movie was setting us up to be like, ah, oh, you got to be careful. Those extremely poor Haitians will curse your baby. Yes, but they just were unable to shoot anyone's religion but their own without it looking spooky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, much like all Americans, we just want to see them have an earthquake and then we'll go about our business. <laughs> oh boy! Well, I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah, because. Because now we're going to cut over to a giant gold-covered church. Uh, no, the movie will never point out that there's a problem with that and the giant poverty stuff we saw a couple seconds before. Sure. And then, yeah, we watch an earthquake in Haiti. And again, I just have to point out, imagine if another country made a movie where they used 9-11 as the opening <laughs> for their spooky horror movie. We would kill the director with a drone. <laughs> I, I had to Google it because I was like, there's no way that that Haitian earthquake was in 2013. There's mm -hmm. no way they're referencing that actual event that happened and killed a bunch of people. There's no way. Mm. Oh, oh no. Yep. Oh no, they did that. Sure <laughs> are. So much scarier than whatever else this movie has to offer is these people losing their homes and families and we're supposed to feel sad for this American couple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Truly, the movie is about to be like, don't worry about it. That's really just for the dad's backstory. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about the, the earthquakes in Haiti. We know that we're playing to an American audience. We're begging you, please do not think about the earthquakes in Haiti. And the only other thing I want to point out is that the mom, of course, who is pregnant, gets um, squooshed. Right, but she gets squooshed in very center stage dramatic lighting, which I appreciated. <laughs> sure. <laughs> like, you'd think it would be hard to find someone who is getting squooshed in a earthquake, but she's really front and center when it comes to this particular earthquake. And she whispers something that feels very important to the plot, but I could not make out at all what she was saying. Uh, spoiler alert, no, it is not. It is the most <laughs> basic of requests. This is not a swing away moment. Let's uh, let's uh, spoil that right there. And then we cut to the hospital, and I'm only going to point this out because it's going to be used as a gotcha, as I think one of the funniest gotchas later in the movie. Yes. We see the doctor walking up, and he's like, hey, we're in Haiti, so you have to choose between the life of your wife or your baby, and then blackout. <laughs> I do like that Leslie Odom Jr. says, I only speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Not like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I only speak English. She's like, you know, I only speak English. Yeah, if you now. want to talk to me, me? <laughs> Leslie Odom Jr., you'll speak English. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So now we're going to cut to Percy, Georgia, mm. sometime later. So same level of poverty as Haiti after the earthquake, just, you know, less sympathetic. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we see that Leslie Odom Jr. has a daughter. So I, I guess we assume he chose the baby at this point. But I wrote in my notes, not me. Sorry, Max, but better to have flour and sugar than a cake. You know what I mean, kid? <laughs> yeah, I would haunt my husband for the rest of his days if he hadn't chosen me. Like he would never get a fucking moment's rest. Yeah. Oh, every time he's up for like a dirty diaper change, you're just floating there next to him. Oh, I'd love to help out, but you chose the baby over me. So I guess I'll just float here with my unfinished business. Just saying, is... hey. Hey, remember me? Remember me? I was actually hanging out with Madonna in heaven. That's right. She's up there already. <laughs> <laughs> this is also where we get our, our second cheap pop scare of the movie, a hide and seek based pop scare. Oh my God. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> so this is the teen daughter. We should introduce her. This is Angela. Mm -hmm. And we know that she spends a lot of time thinking about her dead mom because She's a person with a dead mom in a horror movie, and she has borrowed a scarf from the dead mom box that Leslie mm. Odom Jr. has very prominently out in the middle of his home. Like you do. 
Yeah. 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 With a with a don't touch sign on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. Dead mom shit. <laughs> exactly. Actually, my dead wife, not your dead mom. Oh. So let's just. Uh... Oh. <laughs> That's the vibe, right? It yeah. is definitely the vibe. He because he catches her right in the drop off line of school. He's like, hey, hey, that's mine, and she's like, oh, well, it's my mom, and he's like. Yeah. Is it though? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, it was kind of like an Indiana Jones swapsy situation. So maybe we let me, oh, me mourn and you just like being alive. You technically never met her. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we cut into school. Angela and her friend Catherine, spoilers, she's going to be the other person filled with demons. <laughs> They're making plans to go be mischief children uh-huh, in the in the wet hole yeah <laughs> yes the wet hole that's where you do your best mischiefing <laughs> look i can't speak for myself katie i spent a lot of time talking with my friends about how to get into a wet hole in middle and high school <laughs> and uh, we were never as successful as these girls were it's a lot easier for girls to get into wet holes it just is yeah fair yeah fair yeah. do you think you knew that she was going to be possessed because she looks Almost exactly like a young Linda Blair. She sure yep. does. Mm-hmm. There was a little mm. bit of that. There was also the fact that like every time the camera settled on them, the noise kept going like. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I was like, does this movie just not like white people? And that's true. Yes. I just I didn't realize how far of a call forward I was doing there. <laughs> Also, we should mention that because this does come back up in a really disgusting way, the hide-and-go-seek game was because Angela stole a pork product from her father Mm -hmm. and was hiding it from him, and that's why they were having a little fun game of uh, hide the pork around the house. So it will come back up. Oh, all right. It does? Yeah. Okay. I don't know how it comes back either, but I'm putting a hard pin in that, Alan. I'm excited (laughs) to hear how the pork products come back in. So we cut to dad at work. He's now a family photo photographer. I I just want to take a moment because this scene doesn't matter at all. I almost wrote in our notes like, oh, we should just skip this scene. Except a bunch of spooky demon stuff happens in this scene and later related. So I like to picture that like, that family was going through their own demonic possession and we just never (laughs) heard about it in the movie because there's a bunch of like pop scares and weird shit that happened during this scene. It's interspersed with jackhammering and the child is screaming and it's like, well, yeah, that child's got a demon in him. So I assume this was a callback to the the beginning of the first exorcist when Max von Sydow is having to take his nitroglycerin tablets because there's all the noise Mm. in the rock while he's hanging out. There's like the guys banging their hammers and stuff. And I assume that's what this was supposed to be calling back to. Much like the dog fight at the beginning. I love this. You're bringing the oeuvre full circle, Alan. I appreciate this. This is why we call in Werewolf Ambulance. (laughs) These are the insights we get. But yeah, so he he gets home from work. And I'm just going to tell you, podcast audience, nothing happens in this scene. That does not stop it from being, I counted, four and a half minutes of the dad wandering around into various nothing pop scares. Like literally <laughs> at one point, a dra- Katie teased this at the beginning, a drawer opens and the movie's like, bah, 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 horror movie, we get it. <laughs> like it's their junk drawer. It's got scotch fucking tape. <laughs> I mean, and if it were not, Leslie Odom Jr., I would not watch this scene. Like no. the fact that he is actually a good actor. Yeah. It's so hunky. Engaging. Oh, God. So hunky. Oh, so a man can wear a robe. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Yes. Leslie Odom Jr., and I, I look, I am hesitant to say this. I think it kind of affects the movie how hot he is because there are several <laughs> points in the movie where I'm supposed to be taking a moment very seriously and I'm like, God, his jaw is just fabulous. Like his whole. Oh, Want a whole? I want him to hug me while I cry. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, the kids are filled with demons. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> can you sing that progressive theme song to me, real quick? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I do have one more quick Leslie Odom Jr. being hot thing. Please. Please. This yeah. was specific for you. Yeah. Did you notice that he was wearing the Axel Foley three quarter sleeve sweatshirt <gasps> in the beginning of the movie? I didn't, but I felt some. I felt a pool <laughs> in my uterus, <laughs> so I knew that something was happening. We've also not mentioned that his name is Victor, mm-hmm, and yeah. his daughter is Angela, which is very ham fisted in terms of their roles in this film. Yeah, you know, oh, you think grief. those names mean anything? Oh. I don't know if those names mean anything. <laughs> It's amazing. Her name, his name isn't victim and her name isn't like <laughs> Demangela. <laughs> but at the end of this scene, he wanders around his pop scare house for a little bit. 
then he calls Catherine's parents to be like, hey, where's our daughters? And they're like, ah, they said they were with you. The old switcher. And you ever do this to your parents as kids? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Classic technique. But my parents weren't going to call and find out where I was. So <laughs> yeah, I was no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Katie's parents were like, keep her. Hey, mom, I'm going to be on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's wet, whatever hole she's in. <laughs> but these are good parents because it's a modern exorcist movie. So now they're searching through the woods for the girls. And this is the first time where I was like, okay, these families, there's definitely racial tension going on because Leslie Odom Jr., Victor, is calling both girls' names in their little mini search party, <laughs> but the white family is only calling their daughter's name. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a casting question. Do you cast Norbert Leo Butts, which is the <laughs> father of, of Catherine, just to be an unlikable character? I feel like everything I've ever seen him in, you're like, ugh. Yep. Buddy. Yep. Yeah, he's certainly that character, isn't he? Man has a type. Man has a type. Mm -hmm. He is mm -hmm. uh, he mm -hmm. is communicating what he's there. But dad goes down into the wet hole. The wet hole will be very important. Goes down into the wet hole and he gets pop scared by a snake. But then he finds a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I got nothing for you, scare. podcast audience. <laughs> Neither does the movie, by the way. If you're hoping that something's going to happen. We got like 20 minutes until a thing takes place. <sighs> Good Lord. So now they go to the police station and this scene, this is where the movie went from like, oh, this is kind of a lame horror movie to, oh, this is a hilariously lame horror movie because white dad is punching a hole in the drywall because they didn't have the daughter waiting for him at the police station. What is he upset about? <laughs> I don't know. This guy is the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Norbert. He might as well be at a school board meeting, like mad about a book that has a gay penguin in it or something. Like he's just completely unreal. It's so bad that at one point the cop has to be like, hey, hey, guys, guys, relax. It's just your missing daughters, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what are you so upset about? She never even knew your wife. Right, exactly. <laughs> the most important person in this film. I understand why these people are upset, okay? They actually met their kid, but you need to relax, Victor. <laughs> So now we get for a, a looking for the girls montage accompanied for no reason by the Jabberwocky. <laughs> Why? Is this supposed to signify that we are now going through the looking glass? This is when we will find the demons possessed children. Oh, how subtle. <laughs> Very subtle. Alan, is this a great movie and you forgot to tell us? I think this might be a great movie. Nah, son, it's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you that Alan and I were hanging out a couple of weeks ago and I like fearfully said to him, like, what if it's actually good? And he was like, it won't be. <laughs> it won't be. No, I felt safe in this one. Sometimes in theaters, we like to let them release for a little bit, see a couple of reviews. I saw the preview for this thing and I was like, nah, it's a safe bet. This one goes on the calendar. <laughs> this is a Kevin Sorbo appearance-esque movie. I, I know what's, what's coming in this one. Oh, it would have made it better. <laughs> This is where we get, I think, one of my favorite scenes of the movie, if not my favorite scene of the movie, which is the him doing good cop, bad cop with the unhoused people in the homeless shelter. Oh, my God. <laughs> so this is my this is my pork callback. Oh, OK. Oh, oh, all yeah. right. There it is. Because as you know, all homeless men are monsters. Oh yeah. my God, yes. Let's internalize that. <laughs> <laughs> they're just absolute villains. No matter what they're doing, they're going to be villainous. We yeah, can all obviously. agree on this. Yeah, of <laughs> and course. He's like, well, some kids come into the woods to look for stuff like this and puts a hot dog through the hole in his finger. Or he makes a hole with his finger. He doesn't have a hole in his finger. It's not that weird. Yeah, and and he, <laughs> he does it for so long. So, so long. <laughs> so long. Because look, what happens is they're very clearly getting the shot, right? The director's like, just do it for a bit. We'll do a cut to Leslie flipping the table and yelling at you. But for some reason, he was like taking a bite of his sandwich. So he's like, eh? 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 Now I take it out a little bit and I rub it around the sides. Eh? Now I put it back in. Eh? <laughs> I'm going to hit the mustard spot. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking insane. So he flips the table and he's mad at those homeless people. That never, again, it never comes back. Yeah, it's literally just to be mean to unhoused people. Yes. It's literally to try to be scary. Yeah. Because they were sitting around, they were like, guys, we forgot to make a movie except for the last 20 minutes with the fucking super troopers. So what are, we, what are creepy? And someone was like, people who are at an economic disadvantage. And he was like, perfect. Yeah, let's have a whole scene where we infer they're all rapists. Yeah. I, I just kept thinking like, 
if Chud is kinder to unhoused people than your movie is, you fucked up. You done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so that night he gets home and again, he creeps through the house creepily for truly an infinite amount of time. But then he opens the door and discovers that his, okay, correct me if I'm wrong, Alan, you really catching the oeuvre of this bad boy, but Katie, <laughs> if you know too, his Pentecostal neighbor slash boxing coach has invited a root magic practitioner to bless the house as a surprise. Why does he have this connection to black magic? Oh, yes. Fuck. Root How magic. do I say this? In a way that <laughs> it's like- root magic <laughs> practitioners. He's a Pentecostal. I've been to a Pentecostal church. It is white. Oh, yeah. It is the Dutch buffet of religions. <laughs> the idea that he might be like, you know, um, we should find those three African-American women doing deep root magic that has its origins in like the ancient historicity of the continent of Africa. Oh, my is God. Bizarre. He might as well pull in Moishi, the local rabbi, to be like, yeah, no, I know I'm Pentecostal, but uh, he's going <laughs> to he's going to do a holla over your bed. And again, without telling him, like this was a surprise (laughs) gift. Yes, like his daughter is missing. He comes home, his front door is open. He's overjoyed for a moment. He comes in and he's like, oh, you've brought some other black people. Is it because I'm black? Is it because I'm black? (laughs) Yeah, by this movie. It's exactly what I wrote in my notes. It's like, he definitely was just like, you know what'll cheer my black friend up? (laughs) Other black people. (laughs) You know what it is? We've all been looking for the kids too whitely. Let's get him some black people to look for it. You know, black. I I made him some unseasoned potato salad and I brought over some black friends. Exactly. (laughs) All they had to do was make him a Unitarian and all of this would make perfect sense. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is what I was going to say. Like this movie, and we'll talk about it when it comes to it, is Unitarian Universalist Exorcist, right? Which is a terrible idea and is part of the reason why it's amazing. <laughs> That's a really good point. Yeah. 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 For sure. It's just it's just someone's someone was like either attending a UU church or like their their sister goes there while they were writing this movie and they were like, wait a second, I've got it. They were like, yeah, community is good. We like community. But what if we took it several (laughs) steps further into the worst thing you can imagine? Yeah. So we're now, I just have to point this out. We're now like 20 minutes into the movie and nothing actually scary has happened. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't see that true? (laughs) That's fair. Yep. You know what? That's fair. That's fair. There was that drawer uh, and there was that sausage gesture. So, uh, (laughs) but it's time to find the girls. So, there's a farm guy and he's like, I don't know why horror movies always do this. You guys have watched so many more horror movies than me. No one ever just like, there's never just an establishing shot and a guy's like, oh, look, the girls. The guy always has to be like, hey, Pa, I'm going to go get my large Rube Goldberg machine that is filled with marbles. And then, oops, I dropped one and it rolled under the sewer drain. So now I have to pry. Oh, there are the girls. (laughs) It has to be a 19 step process every time. Yeah, he's looking for medicine for his dead horse. (laughs) Mm -hmm. By the way, that horse went through the hardest performance in this movie. I'd just like to throw that out there. They made that horse lie out there in the rain. He is very clearly pissed off about it. I hope he got OT. That's all I'm saying. I was reading about it. That horse is a bit of a diva. So there was a lot going on behind the scenes. Oh, wow. Good. Good. I I just assume they dragged in a dead horse. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) So yes, the girls are in a, a loft, a, a barn loft, farm somewhere, yeah, far yeah. away, presumably. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I guess. But they are found, and so now we cut to the hospital where they're being treated by racially segregated medical teams. What the fuck was this? What the fuck was this? Did the movie not realize that all the medical professionals they assigned to the black family were black and all the medical professionals they assigned (laughs) to the white family were white in the same hospital. That's what I was trying to figure out. Is it the same hospital? Or did she go to the black hospital and went to the the white hospital? No, because they wave at each other through the window. They do it like, ah, we're filled with demons now, huh? Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Well, at David Duke General, they like to keep things I'm just picturing the girls coming in on like twin stretchers and the two med teams waiting there and one guy being like, do you want it? Yeah, no, we'll take that. And you can take that. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Is Adam on today? Could you get him in here? Because we've we've got one for him. If you know, wink, 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 yeah. wink, wink, wink. 
absolutely bananas. I will point out that even though they are divided by race, luckily, Angela, our African-American girl, she gets the one doctor who has any bedside manner whatsoever. So good. (laughs) The white doctors are like, so you ever fuck your kid? Is that probably why she wandered into the rain? Like you fuck her? Is that what, is it the fucking of your kid that is the big problem? (laughs) Hey, Catherine, snap, snap. Did did, did your dad fuck you? Is that why you're mad right now? You seem upset. (laughs) And because we need to be reminded that the dad is a terrible person, even though he reminds us at every turn, he does all of the answering for her. So every time the doctors ask her a question, he's like, oh, (laughs) And then he bails on the rape kit, which is super weird. Oh, I'll, I'll be outside for this. Yeah, he just, he sits, <laughs> he sits there while they're like doing under the nails and doing the whole thing. And she's like, okay, well, now we're going to check you out. And he's like, whoa, 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 please. I don't like this. This is yucky. <laughs> well, they have to do the, the old, the old hymen test. Yes, yes of course. that is bizarre. <laughs> These are teenage girls. Like they have period. I, I just don't, this is not how. This is not how rape gets work. Yeah, no. Here's a topical joke for you. What are they? T.I.? Oh. Uh, T.I. the rapper has his doctor check his daughter. Every time yes. Oh, okay, to- there we go. We found it. <laughs> we <laughs> found it. Appreciate it. That's good. If we ever pre-release an episode, that joke will fucking... <laughs> <laughs> That's really going to land. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have a spooky moment where white girl, like, here's a baby crying in the hospital and she like, slaps her hand against the window and like, look, I've been on flights with a crying baby. I, it's been my crying baby. I get it. I get it. You don't have to be sure. filled with demons to be upset <laughs> by a baby crying. But this does get her next door neighbor nurse who's trying to pray over her to stop praying. So, I mean, whatever it takes. Oh, yeah, exactly. Baby. Whatever whatever shuts her up. <laughs> I have to say, I think Ann Dowd is wasted on this film. She is way better than this movie deserves. Oh, poor Ann Dowd. Ann Dowd was in an entirely different film, just doing a very serious possession drama while everyone mm-hmm. else was in the like, you know, two's company double mint gum of exorcist <laughs> films. And I feel like they wrote her this monologue at the end where they're like, this is going to be your big dramatic moment. And then she read it and she was like, <laughs> I, I, I'm hoping when they slid the napkin at Denny's across the table to tell her how much she was going to get paid, she just added three more zeros to it and slid it back across the table. They were like, oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. To be fair, I'm pretty sure that that napkin said, we will pay for your meal at this Denny's. And she was like, no. <laughs> zero, zero, zero. zero, 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 zero. <laughs> You're going to pay $30. <laughs> I want to spoil something important for our audience here because I had to live with the disappointment, but our audience does not... We will never, ever get an explanation of what the fuck happened to these girls. The closest we're going to get is this scene right here. And so I'm counting on Alan, our Sherpa of the horror arts, if you will, (laughs) to tell me what the fuck happened. But basically, they're, they're in bed that night. Victor is putting Angela to bed. And she says she wanted to talk to her mom. And so they played with the pendulum, Mm -hmm. something, something demon. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I think you nailed it. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Well, and, and they've been gone for three days, but only thought they were gone for a couple hours, which like I'm on board for that. That's some good spookery. That's, That's yeah, very sure, spooky. Yeah. And their feet are all torn apart from walking without shoes for 30 days or 30 miles. Yeah. Yeah. But why though? Well, I mean, in the first exorcist, Reagan is playing alone with a Ouija board. And yes, that's what that's brings true. in yeah. the demon, Captain Howdy. Right. And in this movie, it's going into a wet hole with a necklace that's going to bring it to you. Yeah. It feels like the demons are getting lazier, right? It's just like, uh, that kid passed a crystal shop. Can I get in there? It's, I mean, there's not a lot of <laughs> options these days. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but the demon is Pazuzu. I mean, it should be Pazuzu, right? Based on the mythology of the series, yeah. yeah. Because Ellen Burstyn... Spoiler alert, we get an Ellen Burstyn. Looking fantastic at 90. Looking yeah. phenomenal. And criminally wasted. Yes. But when she comes into the room, she says, oh, I know you. Yeah. yeah. So it's Pazuzu, the yeah. return. It must be. Yeah. Fucking Pazuzu. Although I do have questions. I mean, we'll get to it when we get to it, but I do have questions about whether or not this is one demon or two. Like, is Pazuzu doing two people's work? Like, he has a bad manager in hell who's like, well, you know, ever since Carol left, we really need you to take on her workload while we transition, but we can look at a title change for you. And Pazuzu is like, oh, come on. 
on, man. This fucking blows. <laughs> or is Pazuzu like having someone shadow him like when you're working a food service job, right? Uh, this is Paul. He'll be following me all night. <laughs> oh, God damn it, Paul. Are you stoned? Yeah, I'm pretty stoned. Oh, man. <laughs> No, in the grand. I'm not giving Paul any of my tips. <laughs> in the grand tradition of how dumb this movie is, they bring in two heart monitors to beat as one, oh fuck so yeah, that you do. know that it's one demon. Which I yeah. felt had to be a callback to The Exorcist Two, The Heretic, where they would get their boop, beep boops matched yeah, up. Yeah, yes, yeah, where yeah. they matched up their beep boops. Yes, it's all coming together. So really, this movie is good. Is what it's I'm great saying. movie, Alan. You've convinced us. <laughs> Wait, no. No, what's that no. legacy? This Alan is Alan's me. favorite movie. Alan texted me leaving the theater and he was like, I have to tell you I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the truth comes out. It all comes out. So we have a, we head over to White Girl's house. <laughs> she doesn't do anything. It's just um it's just spooky. Is this where her mother says, brush your teeth, we have church in the morning? Like, <laughs> yeah. brush your teeth anyway? <laughs> Yo, you know Jesus hates bad breath. Yeah, they only brush their teeth. We don't say it, but o Christians only brush their teeth Saturday night, but they do it hard. They do it hard. <laughs> if you do it once a week, but you do it real good, you only have to do it once a week. That's, uh, that's good advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to have this scary scene here with Angela where he turns the lights off and then she turns them on and like appears real suddenly and quickly, except... He's like kind of talking shit about her. So it seems like Angela like runs from the bed and is like, what the fuck did you just say, Leslie Odom Jr.? <laughs> it's super funny. They were really not going for funny, but it's fucking hilarious. He might as well be like, the demon's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know the greatest failing of my life? Oh, yes. I jumped at this jump scare. Oh, <laughs> cute. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll be turning in all my Halloween decorations after this episode's <laughs> done. Uh, Alan, no shame. I jump at every jump scare, no matter how lame. I promise you. <laughs> I jumped at the dog fight, and it was the first thing that I had no senses <laughs> other than the dog fight to be surprised. And I still was like, oh, blah, blah, drop my popcorn. <laughs> You sat through a half an hour of Taylor Swift advertisements. So. Yeah, well, that's true. true. I, I also <laughs> I jumped at the pop scare of the Eras tour. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so now it's time for us to get into full on possession time. He wakes up the next morning. He's made her a hearty breakfast of special pancakes, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Something. Rocky and, Road. And Rocky Road ice cream. And she has now... Alan, again, you're, you've been sort of the torchbearer, <laughs> the guiding light. Is the big yeah. scary thing that happens at this point in the movie that she has shat her bed? <laughs> no, because when she gets out of the bed, her her under her her pajamas are not soiled. So she just has been farting a lot <laughs> yeah. so much but, that he has to change the sheets. And I was like, well, I've been there. He but, pulls uh, back the sheet and gives it like a, a sniff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I half expected it to be that she had menstruated and they were like, no, it's so evil. <laughs> it's puberty. <laughs> which is the th a theme of the first movie, and, sure. which is done in like a very interesting way. But yeah. in this one, it's just, no. <laughs> no. I feel like the movie was going for she shit the bed, but they chickened out because they realized how hilarious that would be. <laughs> it would be really funny. Yeah. yeah. Also, fun fact, my toddler shits the bed all the time. Not possessed. Yeah. Yes. A running theme for most of the rest of this movie will be Possessed people do the things my toddler does on a pretty regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> and he acts very grossed out about pulling the sheets off the bed. And it's like, you're a single parent. You've changed a number of dirty sheets. <laughs> oh, there's the no shit on you. <laughs> yes. Barf, pee, blood. Yeah, there's literally no amount of bodily fluids that scares a parent at this point. <laughs> totally. If I walked in and my sheets were covered in shit, I'd just be like, oh, nice. They're all contained within the sheets. That's cool. Yeah, it's not going to yeah, get through the them up. Yeah. mattress pad. When my child vomits, my instinct is to try to catch it in my bare hands. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it's <laughs> yep. a parental instinct. And then I'm like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. While we're having gross out hour, I will say yeah. that the, the one time my son has gotten really, really sick and vomited multiple times, me and Anna's solution was just to basically turn him at each other in a pseudo water fight that we had in the middle of his room <laughs> at four in the morning. So wow. yeah, I'm good on whatever, whatever <laughs> splashes on me for the rest of my life. I'm like, Hey, second place. Could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so she's at the hospital. Oh, right. Sorry. She also shits in the bathtub, I think. Is she does she shit in the bathtub? Is that what's supposed to be happening? That bathtub is full of shit. Someone shit in that bathtub. <laughs> yeah. Someone shit in the bathtub. Okay. 
And then she like snuck out of the bathroom after she shit in the bathtub. <laughs> and wouldn't you? Well, now, Alan, now, Alan, let me call you out, Alan, because you were Mr. They didn't, that she didn't shit in the bed. And now she did shit in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> well, where did she shit? Alan? Where's your consistency, man? <laughs> well, the consistency is real water. You saw that. Oh, <laughs> oh that's true. That's true. Yeah. So she shits, she shits in the bed and then shits in the bathtub, which, by the way, is fucking hilarious, right? Yes. And not at all the thing of a horror movie, right? Stifler should come out and be like, gotcha. But there's a there's a sting on it though that's like scary water. No, yeah. that's just shit water. The sting is because his robe dips into oh. it. And he's like, whoa. <laughs> that robe is the secret to his success. He is so hunky in it. He, he drops his toothbrush in there. <laughs> that's no. a pop scare. And then has to debate whether or not to tell himself that he dropped it in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He finds one of her fingernails on the tub too. Yeah. And it's but how did she have the time to shit <laughs> while pulling a fingernail, a fingernail and yeah. hide? That's true. Yeah. Oh. What do you tell you? I mean, while you're shitting, you just rip your fingernails off as you do. I guess so, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Alan <laughs> I just has scroll a, Reddit. Once again, Alan is our guide. <laughs> and if you'd like <laughs> the, to shit on your bed and then into your tub while losing a fingernail, you can sign up for Alan's TikTok course. <laughs> oh, Alan's doing a monthly newsletter that uh, our Patreons get about his... Um, Shit happens. It's called shitting and picking. <laughs> shitting and picking over at the Werewolf Ambulance Patreon. Check it out. Hashtag shitting and picking. But they, their stinger on all of this is that just eh, she's going to have a seizure. That'll be yeah. funny, right? Yeah. She takes him down with the scarf. Oh, yeah. She whoops his ass with that scarf. <laughs> yeah, he hits his head pretty hard. He's fine. And then she has a seizure. Yeah. 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 And then she has a seizure. So now we cut over to the hospital where she's cussing everybody out. Hey, now, to be fair, I have been hospitalized, not for like a big angry episode, but because I'm a sad boy. Yeah. Do they just yell, calm down at you over and over again oh, yeah. as you're being hospitalized? Is that I mean, doesn't standard? that calm you down when someone does that for you? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think they came in and they did it like in a lower tone of voice because I was a sad boy. They just were like, calm down, calm down, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Once they sedate her, the doctor yells, we're ready for the medical examiner if someone can call him. And I thought, that's for dead people. <laughs> Don't generally call them when they're alive. No, no. This stuff I just injected her with is bleach from the mop in the corner. This is, uh, we are going to need the medical examiner. Get the coroner. <laughs> So Angela's had her freak out. That means it's time for a white girl to have her freak out. And she's going to have her freak out at church. Although <laughs> I will say the first quarter of this scene is just her at church acting the way I act at church. You sure. know, yeah, yeah, yeah. being bored, taking your shoes off, jerking it, picking shit up with your feet <laughs> and then flicking the bean. Okay. There... <laughs> Here's the thing. This movie's pretty cowardly. They definitely don't go all the way with the masturbating kid at church. I'm like, good. I, I don't want them to make young actors do that kind of stuff. I think it's actually pseudo like abusive to make mm -hmm. children enact that kind of stuff and, and, and on the edge of what we probably shouldn't portray with real human beings. But also the move, the, the movie doesn't have the courage to not just have this girl like itch your leg and have the movie be like, huh? Huh? What if she was jerking <laughs> off in church? <laughs> Which again is a callback to the first movie, but in a much dumber, dumbed down, watered down version, right? right. Like that scene of Reagan and the crucifix is like heartbreaking yeah. and upsetting and scary. Yeah. And in this, it's just a child looking bored in church, rubbing her, her vagina. And you're yeah. like, well, go for it. I yeah. mean, exactly. yeah, it's boring. <laughs> Do you think William Friedkin was like looking down from heaven? Because he went to heaven. Oh, we could all sure. Agree he on never of course he man. went to heaven. Absolutely. <laughs> and he's like, none of you hit a child in this movie yet? No. Like off scene, <laughs> so they'll cry. None of you had, the, she didn't even jam her mother's face into her nether regions mm -hmm. after masturbate. I mean, what what are we doing here? Movie? Yeah, exactly. No. Grow, grow a spine. Cowards. Grow a spine. <laughs> but then the big reveal, the big like pop scare reveal of this is that Catherine has gotten into the Eucharist and wine like a raccoon. Yes. It looks like when you realize you have mice. <laughs> yes. Like the movie is very sure this is a horrifying scene. And I was like, that's fucking hilarious. Right. She <laughs> literally comes in like double fisting communion crackers. She's like, hey guys, what's up? I'm full of demons. <laughs> covered in wine. Yes. yes. Covered in wine. Like she couldn't figure out butt chugging. No. And she runs down the aisle. Well, she does the slow, scary walk down the aisle. And she's like, yeah. the body in the blood, the body in the blood. And the preacher, who we're going to spend a little more time with in this movie, spoiler alert, is absolutely terrified. 
Dude, this is the one job you are prepared for. <laughs> yes, this is where you should step in and do some <laughs> helping. And he's just like, oh man, fucking up my whole thing. I lost where I was in my speech. <laughs> Guys, there's an 11 year old saying my thing back to me, mean, just someone, someone punch her. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you both know that religion is just a con, right? Like they don't actually have any power. What's this now? <laughs> what? Okay, no, that's fine. That's fine. We can we can move on. Body yeah. in the blood. Yeah. It's also <laughs> oh. not just not being delivered with the gravitas that I think the movie would like, because she's got like a little high pitched squeaky yeah. voice, and she's just yeah. like the body in the blood, the body in the blood. It almost sounds like a like a cheerleading squad. A sing along. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's gonna get started. Someone stands up and starts clapping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Catherine just gave a pretty healthy audition for our other programs. So while we review her resume, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back in a flash with even more Exorcist Believer. Okay. How about Tuesday? Nah, I've got hot, fast capoeira flow. Capoeira flow? Yeah. The teacher, Chris, is great. One time he spent an entire Zoom class reading texts from his estranged father. Ooh. Okay. Uh, how about Saturday? No, that Zoom, Zoom, Zumba. Uh, I assume it's on Zoom. Actually, no, it's a Zumba class set entirely to that Mazda commercial. Oh, nice. Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Katie. We're just trying to find a time for lunch, but we're both so busy with our variety of workout classes. It's really tough. Don't those classes get expensive? They sure do. But without variety in my workout, I tend to plateau or give up. Me too. Guys, guys, if you want to spice up your workouts without breaking the bank... Why don't you just try FitBod? What's FitBod? FitBod creates personalized workouts based on your goals, abilities, and gym setup while helping you track and visualize your progress along the way. What? How's it do that? FitBod's powerful technology understands your strength training ability, studies your past workouts, and adapts to your available gym equipment. The app intelligently varies your intensity and volume and tracks muscle fatigue and recovery to design a well-balanced workout plan. Plus, the app keeps your gym sessions fresh and fun by mixing up your workouts with new exercises, rep schemes, supersets, and circuits. It's true. I downloaded FitBod when they became a sponsor, and I love how I can work out anytime, no matter what I have with me. And I'm never stuck with the same couple of exercises. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse FitBod. All right, guys, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? It's never been easier to get the results you've always wanted. Check out FitBod. Get 25% off your subscription at fitbod.me slash gam. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash G-A-M. FitBod, because I heard Chris is leaving to start his own studio. Oh no, not Chris. He and his dad were just starting to work things out. I know, so great. Workout classes are weird. I have returned, demon. Come for another try, have you, father? Give up, the girl is mine. For now, demon, but this time, he brought back up. Sorry, uh, um, who is this? I'm a Pentecostal minister from across town. Sorry, you're a Pentecostal minister? Yeah, she's here to take you down. Uh, okay, it's just, you guys know that you have wildly conflicting worldviews, right? We both believe in defeating evil. I mean, do you? Because his church has put out several papal decrees over the years that your church is on my side. Like, it's very explicit. Wait, you guys have? Yeah, it's the, the speaking in tongues thing. Okay, Mr. Church Maintenance Fund. Oh, everyone always has to go to the kid fucking. You know what? I'm, I'm actually going to go. I'm cured. By the way, speaking in tongues is mentioned in the Bible. Yeah, by Matthew. That guy's a fucking nutbag. I said I was cured? Give us a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. When we left off, the movie was threatening to happen any minute now. So <laughs> now we're going to cut to the hospital um, where White Dad thinks maybe the uh, demonic possession might be stress. Oh, my God. Yes, or hormones. Or hormones. Mm -hmm. hormones do not cause you to go into a trance state. Otherwise, <laughs> I'd be listening to EDM every month. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. 
I'm just like, no, no, I know. This is when when they get their period for the first time. That's when they cover themselves in sacramental wine and jerk off on a church pew, right? That's pretty standard. I remember I read that in What to Expect when you're expecting a teenager. <laughs> My name's the totally realistic Norbert Butts. I'm, I'm Steve. I'm asshole face poop face. And I'm here to tell you it's probably just the periods. And this is, of course, where the movie has to get homicidally negligent, right? This is where mom, who's a true believer, is like, no, it's possible for children to be filled with demons and we should ignore the advice of these medical professionals, right? <laughs> yes, she goes hard on putting all of her eggs in the demon basket. Sure. She's like, well, Jesus and three days and Easter and hell and all that. Yeah. How did you feel when she said, you know, Jesus was gone for three days? Like I wanted to eat hard boiled eggs and chocolate <laughs> and be locked in my bedroom from 12 to three on Friday because that's when Jesus was on the cross. Okay. It, it wasn't, but you know. <laughs> I also want to throw out there, she says that Jesus went to hell when he died. Yeah, I that's never learned that as a child Catholic. I yeah. also didn't learn that. And Chad GBT thinks I made it up. So I'm pretty sure that's not <laughs> a religion thing because he ascends to heaven. He's like, Sneakaboo, I'm here, touch my holes. And they touch his holes. And then he's like, whoa, and goes to heaven. It'd be weird for him to be like, oh, wait, you know what? I forgot my groceries in hell and like jumps down there to be like, yeah, it sucks to <laughs> suck down here. Yeah, I, I don't think that happened. It was, oh my God. I mean, I don't, I, in the, <laughs> <Never mind. laughs> I don't think that really helped. Um, no. Oh no. To be fair, this is the safest podcast in which to say, I don't think any of that happened. <laughs> it's just when I say it on a micro level, it's, you know, you got to <laughs> zoom out a little. No, no, I get it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so she's going to do some creepy girl stuff about Ann Dowd here. She does like a, mm, yeah, you got scraped. Doesn't she say you got scraped out like a rotten pumpkin? She sure fucking does, which is a terrible way to describe an abortion. Who scrapes out a rotten pumpkin? That's the question that I had, Alan. Thank you. Yeah, why would you need to? One does not scrape out the rotten pumpkin. One leaves it on the porch until your wife gives up and throws it away. <laughs> you just tip it off the porch into the garden and be like, maybe it'll pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> we also get the obligatory scary shots of a mental hospital. Why do we need to demonize the mentally ill along with the homeless? Like, yeah. I am not feeling good right now. This is like a problematic, like they were going for some kind of problematic high score at this point <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> well, do you you know, they're different than us, right? Yeah, they're different. They're broken. They're different they, than us. They could attack at any moment. Although, I will say, this is the first time that a movie has attempted to scare me with what mental hospitals actually look like. And I've talked right. about on the air, I've been in inpatient care a couple of times in my life. Life-saving, incredible moments mm -hmm. that I highly recommend for anyone in my mental health crisis. And these shots, aside from the scary music, are what a mental... You're just sitting sure. around on couches while most people get one-on-one -on -one therapy. So I was like, okay, at least they don't have us like banging our heads on glass and, you know, vomiting into a crayon bucket and then painting with it on the walls or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there was like, there was a nice comforter on the bed. And I was like, this is a step up from most horror movies visualization of yeah, a mental hospital. looks cozy. But Ann Dowd has to tell... Victor about his daughter's cold channeling. So she's like, the first thing she says, she's like, I need to talk to you about something. And he's like, ah, I don't believe in any of this. And she says, you don't believe in God. And he, he replies, and I'm really baffled by this because I feel like I know every flavor of atheism. Yes. I don't believe in the question. What question? Do you believe in God? What do you mean you don't believe in the question? I don't believe yeah. that's a really normal, <laughs> very simple question. You, yeah. You kind of have to believe in it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not, I was, I'm baffled. Reject the mind the boggles. Premise. The mind boggles, yeah. I almost think that the people who made this movie can't, fathom that someone would answer no to you don't believe in God. So <laughs> yeah. they're just like, well, he's obviously got to give a Jordan Peterson ask response. Yeah, exactly. To this. <laughs> and they do their they do a, a trope festival here, right? Dad explains that the only reason he's an atheist is because God killed his wife. And Ann Down gives the worst retort here. She's like, well if you think about it your daughter is a miracle. I wrote in my notes, really? It's kind of a shitty miracle, Ann Dowd. <laughs> it sure is. And he says something like, I've got to check my miracle into the mental institution, which felt very insensitive to talk about his miracle that way. Yeah. I mean, solid burn, <laughs> but a weird. <laughs> yeah. 
And then she, of course, gives the backstory to the scraped out like a pumpkin comment. And again, she's doing this like, oh, I was going to become a nun, but then I had sex and got pregnant and had to get an abortion. And it's a terrible shame. And I've never told anybody before. And I really wanted Victor to just be like, well, it seems like the patriarchy was a real problem in your life. Sorry, you want to be mm -hmm. more a part of it is what you're asking? You'd like to yeah. represent them in some kind of super team? Is that what you're asking for here? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sister Mary getting raw dogged. Yeah, exactly. So now we're going to cut to him watching TV that night. This is where we get, what's her name? Mom from first movie. Chris McNeil. Chris McNeil. Yes. Ellen Burstyn. I was very excited to see her. Yeah. She is apparently on a book tour, which is a weird way to process the fact that your daughter was filled with demons. But yeah, she's been on a book tour and she's written a book about her experiences. And it sounds awfully similar to Victor than what he's going through. Mm -hmm. She also is just spitting out information. Like this is one of the oldest rituals that all societies have. And I was like, is it? Do you have facts to back this up, maybe? <laughs> have... Yes, she says it, it's practiced across all of these times, across all of these religions, which means it must be real and good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Look, there are no ancient things we did that are bad now. I think we can all agree on mm -hmm. that. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they left this in the movie, but the host is like, so I guess the question is, are demons real? And she's like, I mean, people think they are. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I mean, I know which of those I think the problem is, Callan Burson. Do you know what you think the problem is? <laughs> Oh, man. I, just, I have a movie that says, oh, no, movie, don't drag Ellen Burson into this mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they will. They will. And she proceeds to spend the next rest of the movie in a hospital bed, which is exactly what this same director did with Jamie Lee Curtis in the second Halloween of, because he directed that oh, new Halloween right. trilogy right, as well. He did. Yeah. And I feel like he just hates older women. Yeah. Sure. Which Dude, is what dumb. If they're walking around. Gross. Oh, that's true. You don't want them to touch you. <laughs> yeah. Because then yeah. you get the. <laughs> no, just injure them as much as you can and then leave them to spout wisdom from a hospital bed. Yeah, exactly. Sucks. Listen, in the first movie, her daughter jams a crucifix into her crotch. What if, and hear me out, this girl does it to her eyes. Eyes, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to it. So he's going to visit her now and they're going to have, I'm going to say, every dumb conversation I've ever had with one of my wife's hippie friends, right? <laughs> He's like, hey, is this demon stuff real? And she's like, placebos are real. And I'm like, actually, they're wildly overestimated in most common language. But no, I, I get what you're saying. You get what he's saying. Isn't the definition of placebo not real? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm no expert. She also says like, skepticism will only get you so far. And I wrote, really? Like, the search for true things will only get you so far. I, I mean, I guess it won't get you to an answer as quickly as guessing or lying will. <laughs> <laughs> and then again, because the movie felt the need to clarify this, he's like, I mean, were you there when your daughter was exercised? And she was like, oh, God. no, I was, I was downstairs. Some guy threw himself out my window. It was a weird week. <laughs> but, but why wasn't she allowed in the room? Why? What? Oh, it was the patriarchy. The, the patriarchy. patriarchy, exactly. <laughs> I feel like half of this movie is just what MAGA people think woke is. Yes, yeah, 100%. <laughs> All of this is some like MAGA level producer being like, let's make one of those woke movies, but an exorcist, you know, where like all the religions are true and like maybe things are the way they are because of, I don't know, stuff and things. <laughs> we'll be mean to the white people. That's the real horror in this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is also where we learn that Reagan has been on the run from her mother which I did a little research online, I guess was part of like the TV show or one of the other movies. Mm. And I just love in a movie that is entirely inconsistent with its mythos, this director was like, no, guys, we got to respect the canon. Reagan is on the run from her mom right now. We don't want to ruin the timeline, okay? To be fair, she did abandon her child to a life of hanging out with her tutor in a mirrored apartment and tap dancing. <laughs> she did. It's true. It's true. She's that is good on her. at the tap dancing, though. She's great at the tap dancing. She was, yeah. Rolling that big big hex around. So yeah, then the priest shows up, right? And Dowd has called this Catholic priest. This is kind of a subplot of the movie. We haven't talked about it a lot because it doesn't really matter. It's like, 
It's like when you throw a party and there's one friend who's like, oh, I'm not going to make it. And you're like, oh, okay, well, we'll see you next time. And then like they take you through this huge drama about them trying to come to your party. And you're like, oh, I, I really didn't particularly care whether or not you came. You can, not. And they're like, no, no, I really want to be. It. That's how this priest treats this exorcist movie. Yeah, he's so, okay. So he's Catholic. Catherine's family is Pentecostal. Is that what I'm to understand? I think they're just like, Baptist? I think they were Baptist because because neighbor slash boxing coach is Pentecostal. We know okay, that because okay. he does the talking in tongues. Gotcha. And then the root magic people, they're just part of the same board game group or something. I'm not quite okay, sure got it. <laughs> how they got brought into the film. I do like that they have the Catholic priest being like just totally flaccid. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. just, my hands are tied, it's you know? Completely useless. Yeah. For yeah. What, what a refreshing representation of the Catholic Church in these movies. <laughs> But yeah, they get pop scared by Angela and they're like, hey, look, if Angela's pop scaring us, we better go and check out what white girl is doing because she is doing a lot more to her family. And so they head over to her house to see how the white people are doing. Yeah, she's been busy. Yes. She has trashed the place. Why couldn't we see this? Why why, why did you steal this from us movie? Honestly, there's so little action in this movie that like a teenage girl tearing up a living room would have been so welcome. Yeah, just Tasmanian oh. deviling around the house. Yes. Oh, so much better. Dad's crying. When they get there, dad's crying in the tub. The rest <laughs> of the family is downstairs holding hands in the kitchen. <laughs> but yeah, no, Ellen Burstyn's gonna confront the demon now. She, and she walks in. I love this so much because God, the, the stuff they have demon, the space work they have demons do at the beginning of of an exorcism scene is my favorite thing we see on this show, right? Because in this case, the demon is reading the Bible upside down, huh? yeah, just- <laughs> Do you think demons come up with their bits when they're in hell? Like they're getting ready to enter into children's bodies and he's like, so what uh, What creepy thing are you going to do when they walk in the room? I-, I was thinking I would do like a like an upside down Bible reading. Oh, that's good. That's really good. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to really stick it to them. Yeah. <sighs> so she confronts the demon and again like I teased it earlier she's doing a Unitarian Universalist exorcism she's like I rebuke you demon in the name of the energy that binds all of us <laughs> and the uh, friendship and power community and 501 yes. <laughs> a fundraiser for the gardens yeah and so the the possessed little girl stabs her in the eyes, which, look, I, I have also spoken to Unitarian Universalists about their beliefs. Oh, I God. get it. I get it. <laughs> Do you think each, there was one stab for each you? Yeah, you, exactly. you. <laughs> this is for your inclusive sex ed. <laughs> Just pick a God. <laughs> Just be atheists. Admit that you're atheists. <laughs> yeah. So we cut back over to our priest. He's asking exorcist permission. And the only reason I mentioned this scene, because they're just like, oh, uh, no, you can't do that. The last guy had a heart attack and threw himself out a window. But <laughs> the thing that I love about this is that occurred to me in this scene is like, hey, how come they always send one guy? Why don't they send like 40? Right? Like it's, yes. if you actually believed in this, right? You'd think you'd just say, yeah, let's send like 40 guys just so they can at least talk over the demon. Right? <laughs> right. Like you're all sitting here in a room. You're all on this exorcist council. Just get in the car and go. Yeah. Maybe we should take a look at it for ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, no, he's not. No. You, you all did uh, the Pope's exorcist, if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, fuck. Yes, we did. Dragon Age, the Pope exorcist. Absolutely. We did. My kingdom for a Russell Crowe right now. Yes. <laughs> Come in here oh. and say, I'm going to Pope's exorcist. <laughs> it's I'm a gonna me, Mario. <laughs> I'm going to stomp onto that little girl's head and she's going to go bloop and then fall off of the screen. <laughs> you can't do this. I'm 325 pounds right now. <laughs> <laughs> On a two-cylinder Vespa. Yeah, let me get on my unicycle and take me very seriously. Oh man, that movie is so good. I love, oh. Compared to this, it is a fucking Oscar winner. Masterwork. <laughs> Masterwork. Really and hey, we are getting three more of them. So buckle in, everybody. <gasps> three more of the Pope's Exorcist? Three more Pope's Exorcist movies. They signed the contract. Wow. Yeah. Because so- we're getting two more of these. So we're getting two more of these, which I'm uh, real bummed out about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hopefully only one happens. The third one I don't think is in stone. 
Yeah. At this point, I literally wrote in my notes because they're doing the UU bullshit about like, oh, you know, the thing that exorcists have in common is people. And I was like, so boring. I wrote in my notes, I literally miss the devil at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's sort of this like sweeping, swelling score of everything has people in common, like shopping malls and Chick-fil-A and a white supremacy. <laughs> what are we talking about what here? What is happening? Your daughter is filled with... The one time you think that you would refute this kind of bullshit is when someone is filled with a very specific religion's demon, right? It's yes. not like all the religions have demons. No. They didn't even call all the religions. <laughs> they no. just stuck to the white ones. <laughs> just the Christian ones. They do have the root magic. Yeah, it's true. There was definitely a writing room meeting where they were like, do we get a rabbi? And they're like, no, 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 let's not get a rabbi. I don't want it <laughs> yeah, to be. Why not? But, but I want to be clear. This now means it's time to assemble an exorcism dream team. This is, he's literally having a Nick Fury moment with the root magic lady at this point, right? He walks up to her and he's like, hey, you stealing some grave dirt? And she's like, oh no, this is slave magic. And he's like, wow, um, are the people who wrote this movie white and making us say these lines? And he's like, sure are, sure are. Can we talk about this woman for a moment? <laughs> sure. Because she talks about how she had an oncology practice. Obviously. Her own oncology practice, but didn't have much faith in traditional medicine. Like that is a long time and a lot of money you spent to not have faith. Well, in now she does medicine. dirt in jars. She does dirt in jars. <laughs> like and she must have been a shitty cancer doctor like nobody ever got cured of cancer she was like this does not work this, this is traditional terrible medicine. guys i gave them some of that poison stuff what's it called chemotherapy yeah i gave them some of that and they got sicker yeah i told them to stop i told them to stop if it makes yeah. you sick stop right get some grave dirt rub some grave dirt on it get some grave dirt in there yeah they told me they had melanoma i said to stop eating cantaloupe i'm not sure <laughs> if I understand what's happening i said it was slave magic it got real quiet <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, now now they the girls the girls have been released from the hospital, right? Apparently they have uh, were doing a UU exorcism release papers at this hospital because they've tied these girls into a summoning circle in the middle of Victor's house. Yeah. Yes, I love that they put these back to back chairs like they're going to play some sort of dating game, right? And ask each other questions. <laughs> And how did uh, did uh, did they get that medical equipment into the house? Did she steal that from the hospital? She must have. Yeah, and Dow just has it. She, you know, every so often I just take home a little something, a syringe <laughs> here and a heart monitor there. But yeah, they have matching new heart monitors to to monitor the girls' hearts while they have the demons spooked out of them. Oh, Man. Yes. They're beating as one. Yeah. Because I guess... Th only the demon's heart beats. Right, exactly. Or I he's see, a locust. I, Wait, he's a locust. That heart is going to be beating really fast. Yeah, he's a locust. There's a lot of questions that go unanswered here. We got over to Ann Dowd and the priest. And again, this subplot is just so funny to me. He's like pouting out in the car and she's like, Father, you, you coming in to do the, the one thing that your job says you can do? And he's like, no, I, I had to turn in my badge and gun. And she's like, oh, <laughs> okay. Like uh, she gives him this like you can do it speech, and I, I, I expected her to be like get up, you son of a bitch, because Anne Dowd loves you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very much like this is the 1992 Dream Team, but like Carl Malone has just torn his Achilles and yes. can't play. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And he says people have died on both sides of possession. It is religious interference. But isn't <laughs> aren't all real religious rights some kind of interference? Yeah. Like, what, what's your beef with this? Yeah, and it's not clear if it was because he was worried or the priest didn't want him to do it. It gets very unclear. Anyways, she like grabs his Bible and his cross and she's like, I'm Catholicism now. And they're like, okay. Yeah, yeah she gets deputized. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just, and like, let's be real, right? Because the Pentecostal guy is there and the Baptist family is there. They're all moving stuff and getting ready. And it's like, it's the Avengers, right? This is just so obviously mm -hmm. the exorcist ripping off the Avengers. Yes, this is the marvelication of all <laughs> movies. <Ugh>. Truly. <laughs> all right. Well, a rabbi might as well have just stepped out of a glowing portal with the Black Panther and Bucky. So <laughs> I need a second to catch my breath. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. 
Is two exorcisms twice as hard or half as hard? <laughs> Are they filled with the same demon or two demons who work together? Will the fact that these religions' worldviews are wildly in conflict ever come up or matter? Find out the answer to this question and more when we return for the exceptionally silly conclusion of The Exorcist Believer. From the makers of Exorcist Believer. You'll never have the girl back. Never! Comes yet another story not quite willing to put its money down on religious mythos. You have no power here, priest. Oh, I, I, I'm not a priest. I'm a spiritual counselor. What? One man will take a stand against the darkness. I just think atheism is the other side of the coin to religion, you know? No. Of course I don't know. What does that even mean? By closing his eyes. Nobody knows everything. What argument are you having right now? Exorcist. Non-believer but spiritual. Gnosticism means to know something. Oh my god. Are you sure I'm the demon? <laughs> and we're back. When we left off, it was time to motherfucking exercise. Let's do it. <laughs> and the very first comment that, that anyone has about this situation is that the demons appear to be farting up a storm. Yes, gagging at the children is so rude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tying your child up and then gagging at their smell. Come I, on. I really like the idea that the demons are just in their hot box in the room with farts. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just eating Hormel chili and just be like... <laughs> Taco Bell party pack. We, we stopped at uh, Chipotle on the way over here, so good <laughs> luck is, I guess, what we're saying. <laughs> now, I have to be clear because I'm never going to be able to communicate how fucking hilarious this is. <laughs> What this movie does now, and I wish I was making this up, the movie goes, three, two, one, everyone do all your religions at once, go. <laughs> yes. Like, Root Magic Lady is handing out magic bags, yeah. and Dowd has a like a St. Christopher's medal. The Baptist guy, he's sad because they don't really have props, so he's just like <laughs> yelling at the demons. It's fucking, it's truly the demons at this point are looking at each other the way Noah and I look at each other when there's like a street preacher protester at an atheist convention, just like, you want to do a thing? Let's go do a thing. Let's go fuck with him. <laughs> <laughs> the Baptist guy, too, is so ineffectual. I mean, I realize it's an exorcism and everyone's ineffectual, sure. but he is just, I feel like he's having a like, what am I doing here moment? He really <laughs> sucks. Let's, let's say, right, because Root Magic Lady fucking crushes it. We'll talk about what she sure. does in a second. Yes. But he is definitely the most worthless because he doesn't even bother with God words, right? No. Like, Andrew and Dowd comes in and she's like, in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Root Magic Lady, she's just doing spells. Fuck yeah. But then Southern <laughs> Evangelical guy is like, fuck you. F fuck. Fucking. Fuck you. <laughs> just flipping the demons off and they're like, dude, what are you even doing here? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't want to miss the barbecue. We're a schism of a schism. I just, they, they were getting together a dream team. They needed another <laughs> white guy. <laughs> 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 it's also kind of silly that for this dream team and out has to be both science and Catholicism. Two things yeah. which are in very serious contrast to one another. Sure. Got a stethoscope in one hand, crucifix in the other. <laughs> She's kind of light on both though. <laughs> she is. She is kind of light on both. That's true. Yeah. Why won't Norbert take his shoes off? Ooh. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. He doesn't, dad doesn't take his shoes off. And in Victor's else, house? In Victor's house. Rude. And then he like runs outside and then takes his shoes off and comes back in at some point. Yeah, dad is going through a butt face, butthole face, douchebag, whatever that character's name is. Yeah, dad. He will spend the entire, <laughs> yeah, dad, white dad will spend the entire time like going through it. He is very uninvested in this exorcism as far as things go. <laughs> Yeah, when he gets the Grigri bag, he like looks at it and he's like, uh, I guess. Oh. Yes. <laughs> if we're doing everyone's religion, I'll wear the Grigri bag, I guess. <laughs> he's you know what he strikes me as? He strikes me as one of those dads who like have you ever done one like of those parent planning things where like everyone has to bring a thing or do a potluck and some guy who hasn't been a part of it two days beforehand just jumps into the group thread to be like, hey, have we considered an underwater theme? That's what this dad is to this <laughs> <Yeah>. exorcism. <laughs> 
He didn't bring any food. He volunteered to bring napkins as soon as the sign-up sheet went out. And now he's <laughs> fucking up everyone else's good time. Just embarrassing his wife the whole time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now, now they take a little intermission, which is the second funniest thing that happened in this movie. <laughs> like literally, yes. the last scene was this big explosive like, ah, you'll never stop me in the name of the father. And now everyone, and I cannot emphasize this enough, including the demons are just sort of like, oh, okay. Good first round, everybody. This is good. Anyone want a snack? <laughs> Cliff bar? Anything? And the girls are looking like Reagan in the first movie with yeah. sort of the stretched cut skin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they keep showing their heart monitors and their heart rates are at 180, mm-hmm. which like is high, but isn't that high for a child that sure, age? Yeah. Like they're like, oh my God, they're going to die. But yeah. even Ian Dow doesn't know. That's just my <laughs> fat ass watching an exciting movie at this point in my life. Like <laughs> I'm in the cardio zone. Yeah. My Apple watch warns me about that. If I climb stairs too quickly, like let's relax. <laughs> but now it's time for some motherfucking root magic. And can we say this lady crushes everyone else should leave. They should kick them all out. Yeah. If I was one of these other religious figures and I just yelled at two teenage girls with no effect, and then this lady does a fucking smoke bomb into the fireplace and they're vaping out their demons, like, I would be like, oh, okay, you're in charge. You just, I I feel like we run her plan, right? Because she had a smoke bomb in the fireplace and they're they're vaping out their demons. Part of her plan is to pour vinegar on them, which I liked a lot. Because yeah. you could just get a little Cleans salt, a little peppercorn, mm-hmm. get some dill. A couple of days, that'll be real nice. Oh. <laughs> just She puts both girls in a plastic bag, puts them in the fridge overnight. Yeah. <laughs> you got to shake them first. Yeah. I, them up. Is this the first time that we've seen demons blow in cotton? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I can't blow think of another cotton. <laughs> Blow in cotton. Vape queens. That's what they are. You know, when you just hit that vape and you're blowing mad cotton? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I never heard that before and I love it. I wanted someone to sniff and be like, is that bubble gum? Yeah, no, it's, it's bubble gum. It's the same amount of tobacco. It just tastes way better. Also, I just one other thing I want to talk about with Root Magic Lady, because she, again, she throws a smoke bomb into the fireplace and the fire smoke comes out and like fucks up the demons. It's this whole thing. <laughs> Smoke fight. Yeah. And then Ann Dowd jumps in at the end and is like, in the name of Jesus. And I was like, Ann Dowd, <laughs> shut the fuck up. Okay. <laughs> you had your turn. Earthing. You don't get to fucking jump in and be like, oh yeah, my guy too. No, the root magic lady <laughs> is doing the work. You need to get better. Yeah. Get off her coattails. Yeah. For whatever reason, that smoke bomb magic, it filled a bowl with demon juice. Yes. Pee pee. I think it was pee pee. Was it yeah. urine? <laughs> yeah, it looks it's a like lot. It's oh, a mixing it? no. bowl of urine. That's a lot of urine, Alan. I thought it was demon essence. <laughs> She's like, sorry. I'm going to say to you what I said to you at the live show that where we met, that's a lot of yeah. urine, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I didn't know if I was going to get drug tested while I was there, so I made sure to bring some clean. That's fair. That's fair. (laughs) No, I'm just saying, what's more realistic, urine or demon juice? Well, she says, take this away from the house, the stuff in this bowl. And he just goes out and pours it into the sewer, like Mm -hmm. the drain that goes to the sewer. And I thought, Jesus Christ. Whole neighborhood's going to get demons now. That's what's going to happen. They should have poured it on the lawn of one of their neighbors who isn't there because like oh, most of their yeah. cul-de-sac is there at this little party. <laughs> the one neighbor who didn't show up. You dump that demon urine and by the time you're back to the house, it's already made its way back in. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. true. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to get the half a heart demon traps, right? And then drive it a couple <laughs> miles out of town. But yeah, he's out there and he like notices that the priest is just fucking hanging out in his car and he's like, hey, man, do you want to come in and help out with this at all? And he's like, I ah, okay, I'll I'll come in and help. And he's like, all right, great. I'm glad you're finally part of the fucking movie. So back inside, it's time for Angela's demon to play her big reveal, which is... Oh, my God. You remember the beginning when the doctor told dad, hey, you have to choose between the daughter and the mom? Uh Uh-huh. Well, he chose the mom and it it failed. (laughs) Yes. Oops. And this is this is meant to be presented as like a moral failing of his that he chose his wife, which is like I think what a lot of people would do. Yeah. It's not it's not a good dramatic twist. He didn't not want the child. He just didn't choose her. I feel like they were trying to stick the landing on the anti-abortion stuff here. Yeah. Mm. Also, it wasn't like his choice was between killing the baby and saving the mom. He was just like, yeah, save the mom. We'll make another one. Right. Yeah. 
And then I felt bad that I've been haunting Rob all these years. (laughs) He can can poop in peace now. (laughs) Exactly. But then again, this is where the demon sort of doubles down on this. The demons now offer that the parents need to choose which of their kids is going to live and the other one is going to die. And like, look, Katie, yeah. let's let's be a little real with the audience here, okay? As yeah. the parents on the podcast, Alan, you're you're not a parent, are you? No, God. Okay, no. yeah, okay, perfect, <laughs> wonderful, thank you. No. Just a weird uncle. <laughs> yeah. Katie, if you're given this choice, yeah, you're like oh, my kid, right? Instant, like instant, fuckingly. <laughs> yes, of this terrible movie, the thing that I found least realistic was white mom being like, I can't choose because that lady would have been like, Catherine! Yeah, <laughs> one million percent, one bajillion, as would I, by the way. As like, would what the, I, yes. What is the morality this movie is proposing? Like, well, you know, all human life. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to choose between my kid and some girl they know from school. <laughs> I, I once told my pediatrician that I would kill everyone in their waiting room to charge my son's iPad when they were trying to explain antibiotic resistance to me. <laughs> I am. Ch- I, the demons aren't getting through this sentence before I choose my son. They're like, you must choose. And I'm like, I choose Max. And they're like, oh, well, let us finish. Once You don't know. And I, was, I just want you to know I choose Max. I'm buzzing in early, like a Jeopardy question. You have to no, let we, me we, answer. We, we just need to know if you wanted the vegetarian or the chicken meal. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a wild conceit to pretend that like you would be a bad person to choose your own child. Especially for the payoff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which we will get to. Yeah. yeah oh yeah, yeah. my God. So they propose that and the two parents aren't choosing, or at least Victor and, and white mom are not choosing. <laughs> so Catholic priest comes in sort of weirdly timed. Like I felt like they needed to put this earlier in the movie because Catholic guys now here like taking his turn and he's almost as good as smoke magic lady. But then they, then they twist his head around and it kills him, which is, Super fucking funny. I, I Why was it so funny? Though? Okay. It re- I laughed out loud in the theater. I was the only one who did. I laughed super. Oh, I laughed for a while because it's a long scene, right? The iconic thing of the exorcist is the head spinning thing, right? It's that in the pea suit, mm-hmm. right? So the idea that all of a sudden he's doing it, I was like, oh, here's the head spinning. He's like, no, no, it's killing me. And I was like, oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted Leslie Oldham Jr. to be like, Oh, I made him come inside, but I forgot to tell him about the no touching part. Fuck. Oh, (laughs) sorry about that. Sorry, my guy. That's what you get for being a coward out in the car. That's on me. Yeah, he missed it. He missed the intro. (laughs) But the priest getting his head squooshed around fucking a la the mountain, like he just fought the mountain in fucking Game of Thrones. (laughs) That makes white dad, butt face McGee, lose his nerve. And so he's sort of like, calls I choose Catherine from the other room, which is super funny. (laughs) Catherine, I choose Catherine. Right? Who said that? It's literally the joke I wrote in my notes. You you might as well just be like, oh, Catherine, I choose Catherine. What? (laughs) Oh my gosh, no. (laughs) Angela does like a Zinedine Zidane level headbutt. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Flames? Were there flames? There were flames. The note is she possessed by Vinnie Jones. (laughs) Yeah. Different Different footballers, yep. (laughs) This is now a sports podcast. I was going to say, thank you for bringing some sports references to this podcast. I I definitely cannot provide those (laughs) for the show. But yeah, so we assume, at least I assumed as I was watching this, like, oh, now Angela's going to die and Catherine's going to live. But but that's not what happens. We we cut to Catherine in the wet hole by herself and she gets like body tackled by a demon. What does the demon say to her? I choose you, Catherine. I choose you. (laughs) This child has committed the sin of having a dickhead for a father, which I don't know if you are all raising your hands as well, but like, I am also in hell. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Thank you, because that that is my question now. Is Catherine now in hell because her dad's a douchebag? Yes, which makes the ending monologue of this movie so fucking upsetting. So weird. But we'll get there. So weird. Okay, so the demon, by the way, in case you're worried that this is like a scene that you wouldn't be laughing at, (laughs) the motif they went for the demon was six saggy boobs. So don't worry that you would take it too seriously. (laughs) Why does the demon have so many boobs, though? I know. (laughs) To feed the many... Catherines. Demon babies. The many Catherines, yeah. To feed the many unfortunate white children under its control now. (laughs) 
Hi, I'm Titula. I'll be your <laughs> demon. <laughs> it's honestly better than Pazuzu. <laughs> So now we get a police siren and I wrote in my notes. So now the cops are here to shoot the black guy. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I, Eli, when I'm in the movie theater, I'm scrolling down to take the notes. I saw your note and I spit water all over the seat in front of me, which fortunately no one was sitting in. And I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> This is a serious scene. A child is dead. <laughs> it is. It's, they're trying to make it a cackling. serious scene, except the cops walk in and they're like, there's two kids, one of whom is dead, tied to chairs. There's root magic. There's a fucking Pentecostal, right? One guy has his head turned around in a circle and the cops are like, so what happened here? <laughs> yes, everyone should go to jail for this. There's two dead, one wounded. That just doesn't fly. No, definitely, definitely should not fly. Yeah. So now we're going to cut to the police station for the end of the movie wrap up. This is infuriating. Okay. Talk to me about this monologue and dad has at the end. I think someone talked about this earlier. And Dowd's monologue at the end. Let me make a bold statement. Let me say something as brave as it is handsome. Hmm. This is the most nothing statement anyone has ever made at the end of a movie ever. <laughs> she asks the cop, do you think they'll be okay? Meaning, I think Catherine's parents. Yeah. Who, by the way, have two other children. So like, kind of fuck it. That's I why get, you have yeah, more yeah, than one, right? Three. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Two spares. You get replacements. Yeah. Yeah, two and spares. We, and we know they're separated because they showed up at a Denny's at different times. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. The classic <laughs> universal movie language for our marriage is on the rocks. <laughs> And the cop's like, I don't know. That's not actually my job. My job is to prosecute you for having murdered this do this little girl. And Anne Dowd is giving the speech about how, like, God just wants us to get through it. Does he? We, her <laughs> message seems to be that God, like, keep on chugging. Like, God has handed each of us a hang in there, baby <laughs> motivational poster. Yes. Is about as close as we get to a message from him for this. Just suffer and get on with it. Yeah. Which is insane because according to the beliefs of everyone in this film who has participated in the exorcism, Catherine is burning in the hellfires for all eternity. Yeah, because of a dick dad. Right. And not even that dick. I mean, he was a dick, but not for the thing he actually did, which is sort of understandable. Yeah, he's sure. a, this is the one moment that I understood his actions in the movie and she is <laughs> apparently in hell for it. it makes See? Think about it, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're the demon now, dog. Ooh, I am the demon now, dog. So if my daughter and her friend ever get possessed, I sh and they ask who to save, I should stand up and girl. yell, not Lucy. <laughs> don't you, take don't Lucy. save my kid. Take my kid. And the demon's like, wow. No, I saw it in a movie. Shit. Um, okay. Does one of the demons only tell lies and then the other one tells truth? What would you, who would you choose if I asked? Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> And I know what you're thinking, Eli, Eli, look, I've loved this movie. It's made a ton of sense, conflicting <laughs> religion, smoke magic. It's all been great. But what's going on with Ellen Burson <laughs> and her daughter's relationship? Well, don't worry. We get a little teaser at the very end of the movie. Reagan leans down into frame and says, I'm here, mom. I'm here. Which is where I wrote, oh, but she really never did get to see Reagan again, did she? <laughs> 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 And then I wrote, don't say that. That's mean. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> uh, Ellen's failings part two. <laughs> My human failing part two in this movie is that I teared up when fucking Reagan showed Oh, come oh, on, Alan. <laughs> of course you did. You've got all the feelings. Alan, especially really when it comes to Reagan's life and livelihood. <laughs> There were moments earlier in the movie where like Angela's trying, you know, she's, I just wanted to talk to mom. And I was like, God, that's heartbreaking. And then I was like, fuck you. Don't do this. <laughs> yeah, I'm not exactly. doing this. How dare you exorcist How believer? Dare you. you just pop scared me with a drawer. I refuse to feel. <laughs> All right. So as we teased earlier, I think we mentioned it here on the show. There are two more of these movies on the way. <sighs> Given that the first movie was, I don't know, God seems to be up to some things or stuff, where do we think we're headed with movie number two? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> is, El, is, is Ellen, are Ellen Burson and Linda Blair signed on for it? Yes, Linda Blair. I would like to see them be the main. Ooh, be the mains. sort of like Ghostbusting. What if Reagan gets possessed again? Adult. If she style. doesn't tap dance. 
<laughs> I want nothing to do with it. It's true. Yeah, I agree. I, I read somewhere the other day that maybe David Gordon Green will not be involved in the next one. Oh, that one might be a good choice. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is the worst thing he's ever done, including the travesty of the second Halloween movie. And I didn't see the third because I was so angry at the end of the second. <sighs> It's bad. You didn't like Michael Myers talking it through with his family? All right. Well, we'll, we'll now I know which we're going to bring you back on for next year when we do a spectacular. <laughs> yeah. And also, just the end of this movie, I feel like you so you you do a lot of these Christian movies and I feel like they all have to end on this uplifting note. I've never Correct. watched any of them, but that's the vibe I get from mm-hmm. listening to the show. 100%. Yep. So this felt more like a Christian movie than 100%. the bleak horror ending to me, which was weird. Yeah. yeah. It felt like milk toast Christianity too, because right, we usually have the like, l- you know, the one Jew in the movie being like, "I've been saved by Jesus," but this was like, "I've been saved by the fucking Unitarian Universalist potluck view of the world." It was very, <laughs> it's very weird to be shamed by meh the world view. <laughs> yes, it's unsettling. <laughs> All right. Well, Alan, Katie, thank you so much for joining us again. If our listeners want to hear more from you and like I did, listen to your entire back catalog, (laughs) where might they do that? You can find us anywhere you're listening to podcasts. So right here, wherever this is, just look for Werewolf Ambulance and there we are. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, thank you so much for coming. All right. And while that does it for our review of Exorcist Believer, It's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to assure you that my co-hosts aren't dead. So, Alan, tell us (laughs) what's on deck. I'm wearing Heath's skin. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't know. Right. Sorry. There's usually someone who asks me that. Well, it wouldn't be a spooktacular without some world-ending demon fun. So next week, we'll be watching 2014's Kingdom Come. So with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode 426 to a merciful close. Thanks to Alan and Katie from Werewolf Ambulance for joining us again. If you haven't listened to every episode they've ever done like I have, what the fuck are you waiting for? Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make this show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com forward slash god awful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every single show. You can also help us out a ton by leaving a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, The Skeptocrat, available wherever podcasts live. And if you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All their music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with his permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath and Wright, no illusions, Katie and Alan, I'm Eli Bosnick, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. My breakfast cup closing would be the camera panning out on the wet hole and a light chuckling coming from the wet hole. (laughs) Ooh, love it. (laughs) Pazuzu cooks up a big old batch of mac and cheese to take to the next potluck. (laughs) Catherine burned in hell for all eternity because her dad liked her better than her classmate. Do the ski cheers. Thank you for doing ads as always. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. We never do ads, so it's exciting. Nice. All right. Much. Cool. Yeah. Where, I always mean to email and be like, hey, just a reminder, you don't ever have to do our ads if you don't want to, but we don't give a shit. We're shells. Okay. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Us too. They won't let me sell CBD shit, and I really want to. Why won't they? It's unethical. People use it for bad non-science stuff. Like some people enjoy it, but some people use it for like, oh, I'm going to cure my cancer. And and some of the companies aren't super ethical about that. But they have so much money. Yeah, they want to give it to you. They do. I want their sweet, sweet money. (laughs) All right. Interstitial one. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. My name is Carlos. I'm a robot operator. I started out in sanitation. What I would tell those uh, that are interested in, in working for National Beef, sky's the limit here. People are friendly. If you're a go-getter, you're going to accomplish it.
and this is the place to do it. Looking for a job with an opportunity to grow? See Carlos' story and apply now at nationalbeef.com careers or call us at 419-257-5535.